so students uh, coming to this particular topic that is uh, about the uh, different types of dipteran flies so this is a practical aspect of the dipteran flies we have already discussed about this particular dipteran flies in the lecture if you recall and uh, so we'll talk about the uh, in briefly about the uh, morphological characters from the practical point of view now if you see the practical point of view this uh, dipteran flies they have been uh, they are they called the true flies okay they are called the true flies and these true flies they have been divided into four suborders that is what are the suborders they are the nematocera brachycera and cyclorapha so how do you differentiate whether it is a nematoceran fly brachycerin fly or cyclorephan flies i already told you so how to identify the most important thing nematos nematocera so nematos means hair like so they have got hair like filamentous antennae long antennae which is very characteristic of this particular suborder so all the flies will have long filamentous antennae not less than 10 or 11 segments minimum they can be 16 14 to 16 segmented antennae also second comes brachycera brachymera short and of course this nematocerin fly is very small in size 3 mm to maximum they may go up to 7 mm but average size is generally about 4 to 5 mm okay and then comes the brachycera brachy means short the antenna is short only there will be three segments and on the last segment you will find annulations small bead like structures called annula annula or annulations and these flies are very large they are robust okay so nematocerin fly is another thing nematocerin flies will have piercing and sucking type of mouth parts whereas the brachycerin flies they have got cutting and sponging type of mouth parts so you remember we have already discussed about the mouth parts in the previous video in previous ppt so we have the uh, cutting and sponging type of mouth parts in brachycera so tabernid flies then last comes the cyclorephan flies like the muscat flies musca so what is the characteristic of the cyclorephan they are medium in size not very large okay like the tabernid flies smaller than the smaller than the brachycerin flies the antenna in its last segment or the penultimate segment it has got feather like structure called the arista it has got the arista that is one of the most important structure and venation in the wings is very prominent you will find very prominent venations um by accepting a few so let's come to the morphological characters so first of all we will be discussing about the nematocerin flies in that will come there are four uh, families in nematocera so first we come to the family simulidi the so simulidi consists of the uh, genus simulium also called the black flies or the buffalo gnats so why why they are called the black flies you can easily see why they are called the black flies dark in color black in color okay so when these flies will be sitting when they are resting you can see they have got transparent wings the wings are very transparent no hair no bristles no setae nothing no scales no coloring pattern no mottling very clear the characteristic of uh, simulium okay so when they sit they are resting on the surface you see they are clear transparent wings they lay flat on the abdomen they lay flat on the abdomen forming crossing each other like a blade of scissors aisa lag raha hai na jaise kanchi ke do blade ek sath mile jude hue hain so they cross each other like a blade of scissors the wings the thorax you can see this thorax thorax is humped from the lateral view it is very clear this dorsal view is also clear but lateral view is better you can see it has got a humped thorax the antennae is long it is 11 segmented okay uh, now the body has got golden silver hair as you can see here here the black body thorax is black in color but here you can see the body is covered with golden silver hair okay the females they lay eggs when when the eggs are laid the eggs are laid in running water not in stagnant water requires gentle flowing running water streams okay nalas canals where water is free flowing and uh, then this larva is apodous 
they have got chewing type of mouth parts okay and uh, the larva on its anterior hand has got a pro leg it has got a pro leg as you can see i will show you the pro leg in the figure okay and then there are six larval stages there are six larval stages until the pupa is reached the pupa is obtected remember in all nematocystis flies the pupa is obtected now i again need not uh, go for the definitions i think you must know. I, you are already aware of the definitions obtected for pupa there are coarcted pupa obtected pupa exerate pupa larva there are three types depending on the legs uh, apodous oligopod and the polypod larva okay So in the nematocystis flies, the larvae are always in different flies rather. The larvae are always apodous. They don't have any legs, and the uh, pupa here in this case is obtected pupa. Now you see simulium again here. So this is the diagram which you are required to draw in your lab journal, lab manual. So you are required to draw this diagram. So it has got clear wings. It has got a hump thorax. The antenna. the mouth parts and the maxillary parts okay so this is a larva so the larva you can see this pro leg and the anterior end it has got cephalic fan it has got cephalic fan and since it is aquatic the breathing structure are gill spots they have got gills because they are aquatic in nature they have got gills okay now coming to the next family that is the culicidi family culicidi now you can compare the culicoides so not culicidi culicidi ceratopogonidi ceratopogonidi which consists of the genus culicoides or the biting midges nociums or punctus you could see the difference clear difference in the wings from the wings you can differentiate here simulium has clear wings and here you can see it has got mottled wings the wings are dark in color with whitish or grayish areas light areas so this has got a this type of wing pattern or is called the mottled wing they got mottling okay the wing is dark in color and it has got light areas so, so again when they sit the thorax is humped here when they sit the wings they cross each other like blades of a scissor now the most important thing is venation now apart from that you have to identify the wings on the basis of venation so you see the venation in this is called the anterior part of the wing this is the posterior part of the wing so anterior part of the wing you will see the veins they close together to form two cells what is a cell cell is a closed structure which is formed by the veins okay so these are the radial veins <coughs> the radial veins and this is the cross venation so they form two radial cells the first and the second radial cell r1 r2 this cell is closed and then you will find median forks then the then this uh, venation these veins they are thick in the anterior part so this is the anterior part so they are thick in the anterior part in the posterior part as they come they form that they, they bifurcate you see the vein is bifurcating forming fork like structure this is one fork this is another fork so they form median forks in the middle part of the vein okay in the median part of the vein so this is a diagram you required to draw uh, for culicoides so here you can see the mottled wings or wings with spots you can see the median fork you can see the radial cell okay hum thorax the antenna is typical it is very long the how many segments are there there are 14 to 16 segments in the antenna the pulps are short in case of simulium the pulps are long whether there is a short pulps okay so this is how you identify culicoides and culicoides they lay eggs female lay eggs and the larva comes out there are four larval stages you see in case of simulium there are six in case of culicoides there are only four larval stages so you got to need to draw two diagrams one is this 
female culicoid is without the labeling you do the labeling in the similar manner and there is a wing of culicoid is so there are some photographs just to show the culicoid is are very small 3 mm very small they can cross through a normal mosquito net so what culicoid is does you can see the lesions from here you can see uh, because if you remember we discussed that it causes queensland itch or summer summer itch mainly summer dermatitis in case of horses uh, mainly in queensland region of australia and you can see the lesions so this is a hypersensitivity reaction to the bite of culicoides to the saliva of culicoides it consists of both uh, primary that is uh, uh, type 1 as well as the type 4 delayed type of hypersensitivity Uh, yeah, immediate as well as delayed type and you can see there is alopecia from so from the dog of the tail from this withers uh, that is the back part you can see in the withers neck region so these are all the places so accordingly also on the back on the dorsal part lumbar part so so you see the protective clothing and you see it is white in color because generally culicoides are attracted towards color so you generally put white color white clothing or white net so the face has been covered with a white mesh similarly the, the housing you can see the house the house entire house or the stable or the shed has been covered with uh, mesh white mesh and above you can see a cuboid strap the strap is nothing but you will have a bulb or a lamp which is glowing because cuboids are attracted towards carbon dioxide and heat so they get inside and as they get inside it is a trap and they collected in this cup so this is the cup at the bottom this is the cup so cuboids will enter inside once it enters it is attracted by the light it enters inside but it is difficult for them to get out so slowly they will get collected into this cup at the bottom okay so this is about culicoides now coming to the next the phlebotomus the phlebotomus comes under the family psychodidae and again here you can see the difference in the wings very important wings legs wings and the legs very important and the mouth parts so long mouth parts pendulous hanging the other mouth parts if you see the others they are not hanging they are comparatively shorter they are not hanging okay but here they are long mouth parts hanging pendulous mouth parts wings again you see the wing has got a lot of hair lot of hair it is hairy it is lanceolate shaped or lancet lanceolate wings these wings are called the lance you have heard about the lanceolate liver fluke isn't it so lancet shaped you can see it is lancet shaped lanceolate wings and uh, unlike they are not mottled but they have got a lot of hair and where is the hair located you see hair is located on the margin so this is the margin of the wings you can see the hair and you can see it on the veins so wherever the veins are and wherever the margin is you can see here it is very hairy and you can see golden colored yellow colored hair covering the entire body you can see the eyes the eyes are large dark so lanceolate wings long pendulous mouth parts and the hair uh, present on the margin of the wings on the veins hair covered with the body large dark eyes and you have got the legs they are long and stilted stilted stilts you know, stilts they are like thin wooden or bamboo structures generally on which you uh, make some construction that is called a stilt so they, they are long and stilted okay and uh, you can see another important thing you see all the veins they run parallel in the wings all the veins they run parallel the larva also has got four in stars four larval in stars and generally these are not aquatic flies the culicoides and uh, so the larva are not aquatic in case of most not very much aquatic they sorry not i'm i'm wrong uh, the aquatic uh, larva but the habitat of culicoid is also very important generally culicoid is tries to remain in bushy type of vegetation and also in case of wherever you have got 
cracks and crevices wherever you have got uh, old houses or you have got wood brick which is thrown out so in these gaps wherever there is slight amount of moisture and it is cool where you don't get bright sunlight these phlebotomists they try to remain so this is the diagram you required to draw so you can see the culicoides it has got uh, long pendulous mouth parts antenna prominent eyes long stilted legs okay mm, the pulps again important thing the pulps are recurved and hairy you can see the pulps this is very important again in culicoid it is recurved it is not straight it is recurved the wings very prominent for they you can see the parallel wing veins and lanceolate shaped wings and hair which is present on the margin of the wings as well as on the veins and another important thing here in case of phlebotomus when the phlebotomus fly is resting the wings are held above the abdomen they are held over the abdomen in case of culicoides and simulium as you see the wings are laid flat on the abdomen and they cross each other like blades of a scissor so this is very important when it is resting the wings are raised above the abdomen so this is about the uh, difference or identification features morphological features very simple from the figure you correlate and you can find out the differences five prominent differences based on the wings most important so the presence of color or hair or mottling the type of venation presence of fork median fork present of radial cells or present parallel venation or eyes it is prominent or not thorax it is humped or not the wings are held above the abdomen when at rest or the wings are crossing each other when at rest okay and uh, these are some of the and the mouth parts whether it is short whether it is long or it has got a recurved uh, maxilla maxillary pulps these are one of the important features by which you can differentiate between these three genera simulium culicoides and phlebotomus hope uh, you will listen to this video and correlate and try to understand mm. hope it will not be difficult for you to understand i will come up with further video on mosquitoes uh, till that have a good day stay safe and study hard okay enjoy also enjoy as well as study thank you